watched my last couple videos, you know what a hard time I've had catching fish lately. But fortunately, the last couple days, things have really come together. I've been fishing with my friend Travis Vandergriff. We finally got together to fish, and for the first time in what seems like forever. But uh, yesterday, we went out to Watts Bar, and we fished the Clinch Riverside. And when we got there, we had pretty decent current, so we did some drifting. And the first fish I caught was a nice blue. Fish, not a bad fish at all. <laughs> I love catching these guys. <laughs> Definitely not a bad fish at all to get the day started with. A little while after that, I was drifting along and I thought I got hung up. I actually do think I got hung up, but I think what happened was when I popped my bait loose, I think that's when the fish hit it. Got a real good fish. I thought I was hung up. Oh, there we go. Nice flathead for February. <laughs> All right, let's let him go. There he goes. I'm always happy to catch a flathead anytime, but to do it in the middle of February while drift fishing for blues, that made it even more special, so I was really excited to get that fish. But the real excitement happened today. Today, me and Travis went back to Watts Bar, but we were fishing on the Tennessee River side. And when we got there this morning, we had a little bit of current, but not much. We couldn't really drift with it. We had a little bit of a wind when we got there, and it was, it was just negating the current. So we were just trolling along with the current. I had two baits suspended off the front of my kayak, and I had two more dragging behind me. And we were catching some fish. It was just dinks, um, but we were staying in action. And we were having a good time with it. As the day went on, the wind started to pick up. And all of you kayak fishermen out there know the wind is our arch nemesis. I can deal with current. I can deal with bad weather. But wind will ruin your day. And the longer the day went on, the worse the wind got. And on top of that, at 1 o'clock, TVA shut the generators off. So from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., we didn't have any current at all. So, I just got some planer boards in the mail yesterday. I ordered some of those. I've been excited about those. Maybe give those a shot. So, I thought, what better time than right now to try them out? Guys, I don't know if you can see behind me, but if you can, you'll notice some planer boards back there. Uh, this is my first attempt using planer boards. I've uh, been intrigued about this concept for quite some time, simply because in the kayak, when you spread your rods out, because the kayak's so narrow, you really don't have a good spread of your rods. And my hope with these planer boards, if they'll work out, is that I can get a little distance off the side of the kayak. Because one thing I've had a problem with as I've become, as I've started dragging more, is that when a fish hits, it tends to spin the kayak toward me, and it will oftentimes get that second line that I have dragging behind me tangled up with it. So. I'm hoping these planer boards help alleviate that problem. So uh, today is not a review video. It's not a how-to video. Today's just my first attempt. This is the first time I've ever tried these. So uh, I just wanted to share this with you and we'll see how this goes. Stay tuned. Guys, that didn't take long. I'm hooked up with the first fish on the planer board. So far, so good. It's spun me around like it typically does when I'm dragging, but because there's so much distance between the my lines with the other boards, it seems to be working out. I'm not gotten tangled up in my other line. I think this is a very big fish. Fortunately, it's a good one to get started with. And here's the real challenge with these planers. Just unclipping that so that I can reel in the fish. All right, guys, there we go. He ain't a real big fish, and I'm very thankful to have a small one hit on that first one on the planter board because, like I said, today's my first attempt with them, and I've never used them before, so this is a good way to get started. But I tell you what, the planter boards so far, they're working out because typically, like I said, when I catch a fish dragging, it usually catches my second line because it spins the kayak and ends up getting entangled. 
but doing this i had my line spaced so far apart i was able to reel this guy in no problem and, and didn't get my other line tangled so so far so good all right pal back you go guys i'm not going to do any kind of review on these planer boards yet i only used them about an hour today and that's just not enough time to give you an informed opinion to persuade you or dissuade you one way or the other i also don't want to give you any kind of how-to advice on how to use them in the kayak because I'm going to be honest with you, there's a little bit of a learning curve to these things, and uh, I figured out today I still have a lot to learn with them. So uh, give me a little time. I'd like to get you know, 50, 60 hours of use out of them to where I can really give you a, a, an informed opinion and do a, a quality video on it. So give me a little time, and I'll put that together. But uh, uh, a little while after that, I was still trolling along with the planer boards. I also still had my two baits in front of me suspended, and I was trolling along a drop-off. And all of a sudden, just bam, rod tip doubles over, drag screaming, and it was on. Got another fish on, guys. This one hit the suspended rod. This feels like he's got a little, he's got a little size to him. <laughs> just spinning me around. Going around here. This fish is going to take me where he wants to go. It's a good fish, guys. <laughs> We're two or three minutes into this fight now, and he's still pulling. There we go, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Let's get him back in the water. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to toss you like that. You're just a heavyweight. There he goes. Swimming back, healthy as can be. And guys, let me tell you something. When you catch a big fish like that, try to let them go. Get them back in the water. I mean, there's so few of these fish and it takes so long to grow one that big. Don't kill it just for a picture. CPR these things so we can all have a chance at them again when they're 50 pounds bigger. <laughs> what a fish though, what a day. <laughs> That fish was the highlight of my day. I've been looking for that fish for the last three months. It's, it's the best one I've gotten all of 2017 so far, but uh, you know I'm happy with it. Uh, that's, I'm not an expert fisherman by any stretch of the imagination. I don't claim to be, but if there's one piece of advice I could give you, it's just to stay persistent. Keep your baits on good structure. You're not going to catch big fish every day. You're not going to catch them every week. If you're like me, you're not going to catch them every month. But over the course of time, you will get big fish, and all it takes is just keeping your baits where the fish are. That's the biggest piece of advice I could give you is study your lake map, learn where fish are at, and keep your baits there. And over the course of time, over the course of a season, you're going to catch a lot of big fish, whether it be from kayak, boat, bank, wherever you're fishing from. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. Before you go, please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. Uh, me and Travis, we're going to get after them again tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get some more video footage and put together another video real soon. But thanks for watching. See you next time. It's a pretty good fish. <laughs> I'm covered head to toe in slime and I love it.